Hi everyone, welcome to the first ever Great Days Golf Pirate Podcast. With me, Mike Jones, aka Captain Pirate, and I've got two special guests with me today. I've got the one and only, everybody knows him, you guessed it, Gavin Ole. Oh, how Africa. sick are you going to see Sean then? <laughs> <laughs> South African boy, top man, and also alongside him, I've known Gav a long time, but alongside him as my guest today is the one and only, Sean Holly. So welcome, Lance. I think Sean doesn't need any introductions. We all know who he is. We all, everybody knows who he is after the weekend. So uh, I'll let you uh, crack on with something new, Sean, and give us your thoughts on the weekend. A brilliant weekend for Welsh rugby. Yeah, it was. I mean, um, there's probably, um, we're hoping a lot of people who are watching this haven't got a clue who I am because uh, it's meant to be about golf. Uh, yeah, we we had... can't talk about golf after this weekend. Ah, not, no, not to we'll begin have with. to. We'll have to. Well, you know, it's been a busy weekend for me. I was just talking off air now that um, being an international weekend, normally I'd be doing hospitality and entertaining people plus the TV and the radio. But uh, with COVID as it is, then, um, you know, it's, it's, it was restricted a little bit, but I'm still fortunate enough to get on the TV. I was over in Ulster on Friday for Ulster Ospreys, working for Premier Sports. Uh, also doing an online Q&A with Will Carlin and Ryan Jones for a solicitor's firm. That was really great to do. And uh, oh, Scrum 5, for Welsh people who, who support rugby, they, they know Scrum 5. I had to do a review of the games yesterday, so uh, it was a busy weekend. Um, I bet I was, that was a... I bet that was a nightmare golf. trying to review that uh, trying to well, review that game. My God, yeah, we have so much happened in it, <laughs> uh, and I'm I'm only given on those scrum fives, those ones. I'm only really given a minute and a half times two. You know, oh, so man. you try and condense all the action into a minute and a half, and I actually spend. It's quite interesting for people. I watch the game live, then I'm straight onto the laptop. I download the game and I edit out all the themes that I want. Then I have to cut that down to about two minutes worth. I export it into a bit of software where I can talk into it and and draw arrows and squiggles and and that. And then I send that up to the BBC, to the techies who then put the, you know, the, the, the better graphics yeah. on. So by the time I get up there, and I got up there about 2 o'clock for a 7 o'clock start, uh, I sit with the techie guy and then cut that down again to the duration the producer wants. So it's a long, long long-winded process for for what's basically five minutes' work. So I'm only on for five minutes, but it's about seven, (laughs) eight hours. Yeah, I was just going to say, but it's it's great to get an insight into what goes on behind the scenes. I think that's that's, people will definitely be interested in that, but... uh, They'll be more interested in this guy now. Our guest, our uh, guest with us today, Sean, is Gavin. I've, I've known Gavin a long, long time. Uh, mm. We've worked together, but he's got an interesting background. I'll let Gav like give you a bit of his background now, who he is and what he does, and how we get on as mates. Oh, I never said we were mates. <laughs> That's a vicious rumour. <laughs> that is just a rumour. He followed me everywhere, Sean. Every job I went to, he would just annoy me. Everywhere I went, he decided to come with me, and then he was a plague. They put him on shift with me. Oh, I tell you what, hard work. Um, like I said, uh, I have known Mike for a very, very long time. Uh, we both started working West and Corrugated together, and I was a contractor. So uh, for Mike's known me ever since I was about 17, and every time I'd come in, he'd take the mickey, and he was just horrible. I hated it. <laughs> Honestly, That's what you had to do to the youngsters. Yes. So, of course, I mean, Mike is obviously considerably older than me. So, uh, <laughs> obviously, uh, <laughs> uh, we, we then, um, I got taken on by the company, and on the first day, I walked up to the board, and uh, when I was at the board, I looked to see who I was on shift with. I said, Mike Jones. I thought, I wonder if they'll take me back on in my old job. It was, oh, never. And then Mike came up to me and said, oh, Gavin, have you heard the great news? I said, I've just read it. He said, what's the matter? He said, you look cheesed off. I said, I don't like you, Mike. He started laughing. And then he said to me, he said, don't be so soft. He said, we'll make a great team. 
And then uh, after that, it was like uh, plain sailing. We abused everyone, had so much fun, yeah. attacked everyone. And um, many jobs, they had to split us up because yeah. we were just... We were too good. We were too good. We were too good. That was the reason. <laughs> Inseparable. I used yeah. to know people that would cringe when we turn around the corner and, yeah. uh, and stuff like that, you know. Oh, it's, we've had some great times. And uh, unfortunately, he had to finish early in, uh, in Warby's. But um, yeah, well. yeah, I do miss the old fella, mind Sean, now. Uh, sort of, yeah. sort of grown on me. Yeah, he does grow on you. He does grow on you, guys. <laughs> He's still yeah. a knacker, mind. That he's won all those competitions. I will never know. Uh, pirate, he calls himself. Bandit, he should be. <laughs> I think many, many other words. Did he ever tell you, Sean, about the time when him and two others were in a bunker in Portugal? A oh, disabled God, golf? Like, I can't believe you're saying this. Sean, Go do on. you want to know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Come on, Mike. fill your boots. You tell a story better. How you uh, eventually oh. uh, got out of that bunker. Right. So it's a disabled competition. I, I'm a leg amputee, hence the name Pirate. And uh, we were, it, it was in um, Troyer Resort. And if anybody knows Troyer Resort, it's just south of Lisbon on a big sandbank. And they've made this golf course in the middle of a sandbank peninsula. So there's no fair, there's fairways and there's no rough. It's just sand. So I'm playing with, a really famous disabled lady golfer called Monique Kalkman. She's actually in the tennis, World Tennis Hall of Fame, uh, a wheelchair tennis player, won, Olympic, won all sorts of stuff. And a guy called Paulius from Finland, double hand amputee, right, golfer, made his own prosthetics, and he had these, like, tube things with a wire across it that went inside his shirt across his back. If he puts his arms forward, they lock. And if he pulls his arms back, they unlock. So that's how he lets go with the club. So uh, Monique is in a thing called a paragolfer, which is uh, like a really, really fancy wheelchair that can stand her up because she's paralyzed from the waist down. They can stand her up and she can almost play golf, but she has to drive it. So she's in this sand area. In she goes, reverses in, and she's twitching around, getting all her balls. It's her shot. She can't move, can't get out. Wheel spinning away. So Paulius, I'll help, I'll help, goes over, clamps his hands on the back to help. She gets a bit of traction as I got it and spun the wheel a bit. All the sand flicked up when in my knee and I fell as I pushed. Well, what happened then? When I bent my leg to walk, the knee stayed bent because it was full of sand. Well, I can't feel it because I don't know that. So I've taken a step. I hit the floor like a sack of shit, straight <laughs> on my face. I got sand being all over my head. All right, I had some three months with stuck to my head. But the next I look at Mon Monique's got out there, but she's pulling Paul, yes. And because he's pulling him, his hands are trapped on the thing. <laughs> so the three of us now, me and Paul, yes, are led on the floor with his hands trapped in the buggy. I can't get up. Referee turns up. No, he's a, he's a well-known referee. He's what referee competitions on European tour. I know him really well now. At the time, didn't know him from Adam. He come over. He said, "What's going on here?" He said, the, the, "You're five minutes behind." And I went, oh, "Seriously?" So I took my leg off and just gave him my leg, handed it to him, and said, "And he was like." Oh my god! What, what am I going to do with this? I said, "Well, take it to my wife. She can wash it out." Anyway. She got my leg sorted. We managed to get Paulius's arms and, and clamped, sat on the buggy, and we said, right, we're all, we're all ready to go. The group had gone through, so everybody was back in thing. So I sat down with Paulius. I went, oh, my God, Paulius, that was, that was tough. I said, oh, Beth, give me a bag of chocolate. Do you want a fancy bit of Mars bar? He said, yeah, okay. So I, so I imagine I'm sat in the buggy at the steering wheel, and I'm looking to see what everybody's doing, and I put my hand up that way and go, like, there you are. There's your Mars bar. And he taps me and just holds his hands up and goes, I can't open a Mars bar with them, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Paul, yes. So I peeled the Mars bar step. down. I oh, held it in, And he, he goes to have a bite. And as I see him go to have a bite, I sort of go like that without realising. <laughs> so, so I know, I feel the Mars bar go. I think, all right, you got a Mars bar sorted. 
And then he's into me and into me. I turn around. It's, he's gone forward. I've held it like that. Nah, he's bloody choking on the thing. And he can't spit it out. Oh, and he can't get hold of it with his bloody hands because they're tubes. <laughs> it's like, no <laughs> way. That was all within about 30 seconds. So I nearly choked him and he got dragged across the floor by Monique Kaltman. What, what a start of the Pirate Podcast, that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's different, I suppose. See, Tell you us. don't want to be friends with him, Sean. No, I don't want any Mars bars from him. I know that. I know. <laughs> you don't know where they've been, but... Mike, tell us, what, what's this What's this pirate podcast all about there, mate? Well, it is about golf. It's the Great Days Golf Pirate Podcast. So uh, Great Days Golf is a, a new business that I'm so pleased to be part of with yourself, uh, Simon and Richie, four of us. But we've got a very special now, non-exec directors come on board, Jonathan Jiffy Davis. Everybody saw him on the weekend. He's on board with us. He's excited about what we're doing. And I tell you, it's, it's a great journey we're on now. We've got golf clubs signing up so they can sit in our app and everybody can see the latest offers they've got on board. Also, our users can download the app for free at greatdaysgolf.com. There's a link there and you can download it. And you can see our latest events because we, we are event hosts as well. And the unique theme we do at our events is Sean and... Uh, other associates will host a little Q&A or a little question session after. So you don't just get a game of golf and a nice bit of food. And then you get a bit of entertainment as well in the evening. And that's unique, all in one package. And that's like, it's, I, I just can't wait for this season to get going. It's, it's going to be incredible. It's going to yeah, be absolutely tough, incredible. Good. Yeah, it's been tough. I, I, and I was playing... Um... Probably in that first lockdown, Gav, uh, I was getting yeah. out. I would say four times a week. You know, I was even when we could yeah. only go on our own. I was, I was sort of going down. Maybe, uh, God, it's last summer now, wasn't it? it was this time last I year. Know. I was, get, I was going down sort of late afternoon. So most of the, most people had, fit, had done by then. I was getting mm. nine or twelve holes in. I was mm. hitting maybe two or three balls on a my club and. And I, and I was just practicing and practicing. And then, of course, we got back to twos and threes and fours and started playing yeah. with, with my society. Well, I'll tell you about my society. I mean, now, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, little comps. And then the, then the clubs opened without the clubhouse. So you got back to Saturday morning comps. And I went down from probably 15 uh, handicap to nine. So wow. I, I've been devastated by the this latest lockdown because I, I I haven't even picked my putter up to put at home, you know, and I'm I'm really worried. We're gonna yeah. be back at the end of the month. What about you, Gav? You play? Um yeah, me and Mike um, when we were in Western Collie and I played when I lived in Brunei, Borneo. Um we finished school at one o'clock in the mo- in the afternoon. So we had a free free day really, and I played a lot of a uh, lot of golf over there, but it was uh, a lot different than over here. Uh, very often you'd slice one and then you'd have to go in and the snake has wrapped itself around your golf ball and you think, I'll take the drop on that one. Bloody hell. <laughs> and, uh, at the time, me and my father, I think we were on the 15th or 16th and it was all, it was called a monkey hole anyway. And there was um, uh, a tree which had a long, long branch that came out and there was a monkey just sat on it. So, of course, as I lined up now, I thought, oh, I'll never ever reach him, of course. And then his partner come by the side, and no word of a lie, this isn't. And uh, I struck the ball, probably the, the finest I've ever hit a ball. And it took the monkey completely off the branch. And the most funny thing for me was the other monkey, uh, one minute he was like sort of like making noises towards him. He turned around and looked at him and thought, where the hell has he gone? And, looked down <laughs> like, and I killed it. So, so you'd never believe it. My father and me, the, the amount of snakes we used to see over there, but then when I come back, I wanted to get back into it again. And uh, Mike said, oh, do you fancy a game? And we started at Woodlake Park. And we would finish our shifts off nights, believe it or not. And we'd go up there when it was, you know, there was all, um, I don't know, frost coming down and everything. Mike, it all winds and weathers, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we played you know, anywhere. The was down there. I nearly killed Howard, the, the, uh, the greenskeeper, once with a fog. I didn't realise he was on the, on the green. And I uh, hit him on the side of the leg. I, I don't think he's ever forgiven me, but uh, I'm quite happy at it. <laughs> yeah, and people. 
I think it's so, probably I safer say, playing so, with you, Gav. And it's probably <laughs> safer playing with you, not, yeah, not being a distance from you. Yeah, exactly. No, no, it's all been bad. Yeah, it's all right. I've enjoyed playing with Mike. Uh, I mean, he he done that extra little stretch more when he had both his legs, like spinning <laughs> the ball backwards and, uh, you know, drawing and feeding. I just, I'm one of these that puts the ball down. If it goes to the left and it goes on the green, that was just pure luck. But I, I'm going to take it every time, you know. Hopefully, yeah. all, the, all the golfers are watching this, uh, uh, just like you and I got point and shoot. Exactly. It, Mike, uh, Mike did treat me last year down the... What, uh, I was going to ask you, what um, golf uh, club are you with? I'm with the oh. Grove at the moment, the Grove in Post Call. Oh, wow. Is that the one right by um, oh, the rest, or is that... Is it rest bay? This no, 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 no. That, that's the Royal. That's Royal Post that's Call. Jiffy, Royal. Jiffy's a member there. Uh, right. The Grove is... Um, it's not quite the Royal. It, we not, we not. like it, you know. It's probably not yeah, as yeah. difficult as the Royal, but uh, it's a lovely little course just off the M4 by Pyle. Um, the gen right. there, both calls. Oh, so lovely. I, I started there because, um, you know, when I was coaching rugby, I coached rugby professionally for such a long time. You don't get to play that much. You get invited along to guest days yeah. and so on, but you, you, you just haven't got the time. And in the summer, you're either on tour or on holiday because it's pre-season or you're in the middle of pre-season. So, I, you know, finishing when I finished coaching and I was going to take a break um, because my son uh, contracted a, a nasty tumour in his neck, I thought, I'm going to take a break, oh. take a year off. Mm. Uh, started playing some golf again. Um, he's all right, by the way, but uh, I, I never, you know, had I have had the inclination to go back with other things like the TV stuff and my other businesses have taken over. And now Great Days Golf, I've really sort of focused in on, on playing a lot more and, and loving it. So I joined yeah. the Grove because a couple of mates were down there. And, um, and yeah, it was a good place to start. So they gave me an 18 handicap for my first three cards. And I just work and work and work at it. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm self-taught. I was always a decent sportsman. You know, I, I, I played yeah. schoolboy international football, cricket and rugby and um, I used to play with my dad as a, as a nipper and um, yeah. so I, I had the hand eye being a cricketer um, and I just I just worked and worked and worked, it's, you know it's really hard as all, yeah. the, all the watchers yeah. will know but uh, but it's great because you you know you, I've just had two of my best mates who are older than me who never played, they're cricketers as well just take it up last summer, one's 62 and one's 58 and they're just taking it up and they're loving it. Right. But I can play with them because of the handicap system. And this is what I was trying to tell them, you know. We can have a great yeah. game. We can have a great day's golf. Uh, and still, it can be competitive because we are competitive animals. So, and I, but that's society. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, yeah it and is I, great that you've got the handicap that, that makes it fair. It's a level playing field all the time, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. And I, I, that society I was telling you about. I got invited to join the um, the wedges, which is the Welsh entertainers and do goods, do gooders uh, yeah. golf society. Oh, that's uh, the one you were going to say about, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and it's full of comedians. It's full of genuine comedians, yeah. um, like Rod Woodward, who's done the last couple of Royal Variety performances. He's in there. Owen Money, you know, the radio presenter. Yeah, and, yeah. And, no. uh, I've uh, seen Colin him a few Price. times, my funny guy. Yeah, and, and it's hilarious. You go and play, oh, and you, yeah. you you get drawn with people, and, and you know they're just cracking jokes all the time. They have yeah. a sing song or a, or a cabaret after. Who the hell do you have a game of golf? I'll never know. <laughs> well, they are good golfers as well. They're good golfers as well. To be fair to them, Is so, they? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I am enjoying it, and of course with Great Days Golf, then. Um, oh, tremendous um, idea. Full on to it, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a tremendous idea! I, well, I said I hope you you all have the success you deserve, really, with that, and I'm sure you will. Just well, remember, Gary, on you the see, so podcast, if you ever have a proper game somewhere. <laughs> well, you know, I am getting invited <laughs> along again, and I can go now. But uh, you mentioned Woodlake Park there; they they're uh, one of our associate clubs and the grow of my club. So uh, we're Lovely. just expecting when golf picks up now for. Um, for golf clubs to sign up, you know, because it's our app is brilliantly uh, designed. It's really mm. easy and looks slick and professional. Aspire to be uh, one of our directors, Simon yeah. uh, owns that company and they, they've done it as our digital partners. And it's just a no brainer, really. You know, clubs only pay, I think it's £99 a month to, to sign up and, you know, they get their own 
place sat in the app, uh, their own buttons for people to link to. And the, the, the big draw for them is between us all, with the, the sort of executive partners we've got, people like Becky Morgan, who's a, a lady professional golfer, Emma Dodds, a, a TV presenter, Jiffy, of course, Dan Bigger is one of our sort of ambassadors, and the rest of us. We've got a, we've got a social media reach of about what half a million. So, you know, for golf clubs to, to pay £99 a year to sit in our app and get posted out to that many followers, that reach, and things like this, now the Pirate Podcast and our YouTube channel will will steadily grow it's a bit of a no-brainer really you know isn't it mike uh, well it is I, oh gab's gone oh there he is hang on he's back <laughs> there we go my first zoom in as well i really have to apologize guys but that was my barbecue turning up that's why i had to lean off to the side a bloke ringing me wants to deliver my it's, it's freezing out there we had a bit of sun yesterday so i ordered a barbecue bloody terrible i couldn't believe it but anyway, as you said about Great Days Golf, when it gets going now, it's going to be tremendous. It's going to it's going to fly off the shelf. People are going to want to get involved in it. Our events mm. are selling out. They, they, I think we've only got one event available now if people want to get in touch, and that's the 10 B I in Man 1. But we're releasing some more now during the summer, so it's it's really exciting times. And uh, it's... People like yourself, Sean, what you you put so much effort into it. That's why I wanted you to come on and be a guest on you to begin with, so we can get our message out of what we're trying to achieve, and people can see the sort of people we are and what we're going to do. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think you know, it it what we don't want is the pilot podcast to be a great day's golf sales pitch every week, isn't it? So, I mean, yeah, uh, we get true. we get that out of the way and. Exactly. I know you've got planned. You've got Gav on today, and you've got some great guests planned, haven't you? Uh, but it, you know, this podcast, I would imagine, is about golf anecdotes and you know yeah. technical stuff and you know funny stories, sharing sharing information about clubs and and places to visit. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I've I've I had my fiftieth birthday, Gav, in November. And my dad's a keen golfer. Um, oh, wow. and you know, they said my mum and dad said, "Well, look, what do we get you to?" Uh, for your 50th it was in lockdown and I said yeah. I don't need anything well they got me a trip and golf with with me and my dad to St Andrews the old course oh my oh, god mate. so I wanted to ask you that Mike you know about you know the ballot and things like that we're, we're both a bit nervous about it you know about how that works don't don't be nervous at all I I I've played a lot of golf all over all over the world now when I think about it but I always wanted to play St Andrews and my birthday, Beth didn't know what to get me. She keeps saying, what do you get the man who got everything? So she, I said, I want to go to St. Andrews. Same as, as you, it's, it's a, a place that holds a lot of history. And we, we, I, I, I was desperate to go there. So we booked in. There's a phone number you can get through the website. And you apply and you go into a ballot. And basically, they can't guarantee you a, a spot. But if you're there for two days, there's a really, really high percentage that you're going to get a game and they come back and they'll give you a tea time then and you just turn up just like you would at any other golf club there's a little hut you pay your green fees they give you a lovely bag of presentation stuff off you go to the first tee the tart start to seize you and you tee off on the most famous first hole in golf so where do you put that ballot in, man? If if we've booked dates to be there, when do you put so, in for that? So I went in? it through the uh, the Links Trust, who run the St Andrews Links, because that Links, I don't know whether you know, know it geographically, is a headland, and there's like four or five courses on there, all in a small space. So you can play any of those courses, and you and and you do it all online at the. I'm, I'm sure the website is the St Andrews links trust that, that might that, not be though. the exact name so let's say but, i booked it in me i i would yeah. i would put, put in for the ballot now would i or i have to There's, wait for the date the, i i'm not sure about doing that in advance because you can do it in packages through hotels as well so if you stay at the old course hotel i think Resex do a similar deal as well and i think the fairmont do it where they hold so many tea times and you can, when you book your stay, you can book your golf, and they right. guarantee you spots. The ballot is if you're going up as an individual with ah. no pre-planned p- package and you want to get in. 
So my suggestion, if you haven't already booked it, is book it through a hotel and then you're guaranteed a, a spot and a tea time. You can do the whole <laughs> thing in one go. That's that much easier to do. But the ballot was really straightforward and simple. Yeah. Well, maybe I would have the... thought... Go on. Go on, Gav. I would have thought, you know, if you booked that, Sean, that you were definitely going to play on that day. I didn't know anything about that, like Mike just yeah, said. Yeah, it, it is, you know, and... It is. Ooh. It can be quite convoluted. I didn't know that you could book yeah. a package and then guarantee a guy. I think that's probably the best way. But anybody who's watching or listening, maybe can put a comment, you know, yeah, uh, on, on our page here on the YouTube and um, and get a discussion going, Mike, about um, St Andrews. I mean, I know uh, I was talking to Jiffy, who went up there not so long ago, actually, uh, but he went up in a private jet, didn't he? So uh, <laughs> as he, he does. Was saying, he was saying that there's a couple of new courses, not far away, American-backed courses that are absolutely fantastic, uh, <laughs> worth playing. So we'll have to get up there. It's fantastic. Anywhere in Scotland around there is fantastic value for money as well. You can find some real gems, some courses that are just beautiful to play, and they're like 30 quid for a green for you. And you're thinking, how can this be 30 quid? You know, it's a, it's there are some fantastic deals if you're prepared to look around. So uh, I, I, that's the one place I personally love playing. And uh, oh, as you oh, said, I got some guests lined up, and there's a, a girl on next week, Rachel McQueen. She's one of our associates at Great Days Golf, and she's on next week. So she's going to give us the full lowdown. If you're interested in anything in Scotland, she's going to be able to tell us in much more detail about what we can do and where we can go and the fun we can have when we play golf up there. So I'm really excited about that. So uh, that'll be really good. i got to stop saying so. But I'm new to this. And <laughs> it's a learning curve yeah. and I'm feeling good about it at the moment. Yeah, but have you played Celtic Manor, ask... Sean? What's that, Gav? Have you played Celtic Manor match? Yeah, I have. I've been fortunate to play quite a few times, actually. Actually, <laughs> this is not planned, is it? But I was digging through some old photos and I mentioned my dad on his 65th, uh, me and my brother um, took him for a golf and stay at the Celtic Manor, you know, because it was the 2010 uh, Ryder Cup and we booked it uh, for just after, so the week after they played the 2010. And, they, and there's oh, a yeah. photo, look. Oh, wow. So that's, that's, that's that's from 2010, Ooh. so that's like 11 years ago. 39 that's your dad, ago. is it? <laughs> it's just that, it literally is just hanging around here. Yeah, like I was going through them the other day. But yeah, yeah, I have I have played it a bit. Uh, and, and Mike has kindly invited me out. He's an ambassador up there uh, for the Celtic Manor. So he, he's kindly invited it's, me a few times, played with him. So Yeah, that's one experience I really enjoyed and I'll always treasure. Um, I, uh, Mike done exactly the same for me. We had uh, the clubs cl taken off me. I thought the thieving devils, I'm in Newport, and they've already nicked my clubs. But <laughs> deep God, when I had them back, they were clean. So uh, Mike must have some pulling. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we, uh, we went down to the tee then, and like you said, you know, playing a course like that, you're quite uh, quite nervous for the first, get the first one underway, in it? Yeah. Rip and ripped it, and uh, lovely. I had a really nice day there. We, uh, we took an ex-colleague of ours as well, um, or oh, Mike's ex-colleague, my yeah. colleague, um, uh, Jamie Prosser. Well, I tell you what, I've never had so much fun in all my life. I tell you what, never played before. Funny, but yeah, no, never. You could tell. Yeah, and of course, the sarcasm and everything of him, Mike, uh, towards him. Uh, but he, he, oh. he said the same. It was probably the best he's had. I mean, like he hit this one. He thought he was going to kill it, wasn't it? And it went straight in the yeah. bunker. Remember, Mike? It only yeah. went. To <laughs> but I tell you what, laugh. Uh, but afterwards, his next recovery shot out the out the sand onto the green, and we thought you can hit it like fifty yards, but you've just hit it one hundred and fifty out the sand onto the onto green. The green. He, was, he was incredible. I've never seen nothing oh. like it with him. He talked about it for weeks and weeks in work. <laughs> there's, um, he there's was three, three quick stories about me and Celtic Man. Right, the first, if I. If I'm on, I'm I'm on, right? And I, I got invited up to play in a uh, what was it, Bow Bath Charity Day by Jiffy, funnily enough. And I didn't have a handicap, so I put my handicap in as 18, right? I didn't have one, and I thought, oh, 18 right. on the 2010. Yeah. 
I honestly, I went round the front nine, level par grow. <laughs> no <laughs> way. <laughs> I can imagine it because I've seen I you did. play and I can see I that was, happening. Mike, I was on, right? Yeah. And uh, I sort of held it together back nine and I finished up. I played it something stupid, like eight over, right? Which for me at the time, I wasn't playing yeah. much golf. And I won the tournament by a by a street. It was for an iPad Air, right? I, oh, I my I God. It. Jiffy was throwing buns at me, right? As if so you, yeah. you, you should it be a ashamed. It was a charity day. Yeah. You know, but that happens there. So that was one time. Yeah. Um, the next time then, I got invited up um, by uh, a charity called Rugby for Heroes to play. And I played with some of those, uh, the Ryder Cup disabled team. Uh, oh, right. And I, uh, uh, yeah. And I'm drawn now. I'm on. I forget who I was playing with. My pan. I think it was Tina Delport, uh, the old South African uh, winger. And we were paired against two of the Ryder Cup team. One um, had lost uh, a lot of his vision in a tank in Bosnia, right? Yeah. Um, bang, tank went up. Lost a lot of his vision and that. And he was off six, right? The other boy. The other boy had one arm. He'd had one arm blown off with an IED <laughs> in Afghanistan. This is a right? joke. It must be. It's not a joke, Gav. I'm telling one you. One arm now, black. I've yeah. rocked up. He's got one arm, right? And it's his left arm. So Oof. he would normally be right-handed. Right-handed, right? yeah. So he had his right arm gone, okay? Oh, and I'm on the first day. I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of a bit choked, really, as well. And he's got it left-handed, a one arm, okay? Yeah. He's gone... He's hit it 200 yards down the middle of the first fairway, right? And my Uber fly is going yeah. in my mouth. You know, and you, when, you, when you come across that for the first time, you, t- yeah. you don't know what to say or how to behave, you know? And he was, they were amazing people. I think he played off 18, you know, with one arm. Yeah. I, I mean, and he beat me hands down, you know? It was, it was a real humbling experience. So that was that. And he, actually, on the round, I got to know him really, really well. And, um, he said, I, I, was, I was talking to him about, you know, losing his arm. And he said, that wasn't the, the, the main thing, he said. Uh, and he told me the story. They had an Afghan um, uh, liaison with them. And he was ahead of his sort of troop. He was leading his troop. And click, he stepped on something. So he had to get to oh, him, shit. calm him down, you know, get his guys out and clear the area. But get to him and, and talk him down. And he said, I got close to him and bang. Uh, and it blew me. He said, I don't know much about it. Obviously, he lost his arm. Yeah. But he said, the worst thing about it was, and he took his shirt off, it's just in the back, his back. He said, contained within the IED, they put obviously nails and glass and all that, but they put things like human feces and rat poison and all of that. Oh. He said, losing my arm, he said, was the, the least of my worries. He had, the, yeah. he had so many diseases in his recovery time. And this just, I was nearly crying listening to it. Christ is horrendous, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it was horrendous. Uh, so that was the second um, sort of story on, on Celtic Manor. And the third one's a little bit happier, I suppose. But I, I got invited along to play again in a charity day. But I was there with, um, I'm mingling with Steve Redgrave, Graeme Swan, oh, yeah. um, Peter Jones, you no know, Dragon's Den. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All of these. You know, it was a, I walked in and I was like one of the, Guess and I felt sorry for it. Whichever corporate team had me, <laughs> and they looking well. They could have had Steve Redgrave, <laughs> Peter Jones, Martin Williams, Jiffy, yeah. all these legends. Jimmy Balsh was there, and, and and they had me. So I had to really up my game then, didn't I? Yeah, you know, imagine. Well, I tell you something. Out that... wrong, they drag you there. Uh... Sean is, was 13. He's down to nine, did you say, now? Oh, lovely. Yeah. 300 yards, he hits it off a tee, mine. Never. I don't go half that far sw- on my holidays. Half a swing. Mm. He used oh, to really? it. 300, yeah, he used to it. It's 350 yards. But it, it, it <laughs> could be like army golf. Left, right, left, right. <laughs> First time I played with him, we had it like, calm down now. Sean just learned to it in a bit smoother. So we played down the grove, and he went, yeah, I've been doing it, Mike. It's great. Got down there, he went, nice little smooth swing, and it. I just, I've never seen nothing like it. It went like a bloody rocket with a two-yard fade, and uh, I was going, right, whatever you do, Sean, 
do not hit it any harder. <laughs> Just do it any me harder. Well. He's coaching me well, Gav. <laughs> he is, fair play. He, he yeah. kept on to me all the time. He said, you haven't got to kill the thing. <laughs> Well, like Mike's said, good like that. You play around with Mike, and as well as his company, he's got little tips here and there, and he's got a calm oh, way about him. And he's a natural coach like that. And it's like, like his, around the green, he's he's uh, he's give me little tips that that help, you know, yardage and stuff, you know, that I would go for maybe, you know, say it's a seven iron for me because I hit it long, I go, yeah. boy, I could get there in a, in a hard eight, you know. Yeah, get, but he's like, no, go half a swing, use your seven, let the club do the work, and and so on. Mm-hmm. So he, he's great like that. And I, I, I'm, I've played with him with other people now, and he's exactly the same with others. It's uh, yeah. Well, the two okay. tips he always gave me when I was playing, I go down to eight. Was um, if you ever want the ball to go up in the air and over, hit down on it, which is you would think you'd want to lift it all the time. And if you wanted to go further, a smoother, slower swing will make you go further. Which, and that was a two tips that uh, him, uh, you know, that I, I took off, Mike, to get He down. never listened, mate. He never listened. A word of it. He still got a 40-yard slice. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter how far I go left, it still goes that far right. That's the South African in you, that is, but... <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, but it's a fantastic sport, boys. And like you said, you know, uh, with all this you're doing now, like you said, I'm sure you're going to see parts of the world that, that uh, a lot of people will never ever see. But um, like I said, if you can get all these couple different companies, hopefully they all want to spend their cash now when you come out of lockdown. It'll be great, mate. It's a really yeah. exciting time for us, uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. Have they said or they announced when they're thinking of opening the, the clubs again? We we got a like I got a personally got a feeling middle of March because the announcement on the twelfth I heard like rumours going that we could be two weeks in front of England, that'd so be nice that'd be you. great. But they're gonna have to give people notice. They can't just say right, you can open today in the announcement. They have to give notice. So I'd love it to be uh, earlier, but. It looks like, in all essence, it could be the 29th, the same as England. And then they're giving the golf clubs two weeks' notice to get everything ready again because it yeah. falls apart and gets a bit chaotic if you just say, today's the date, and you tell them on that date. That, that just yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. I bet you'll be itching, and even if it's raining, you'll be out playing golf then, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I, water I don't go in the rain, but... <laughs> it's Edel Rust. I'll be out in the snow. I will. I just want to play. But uh, <laughs> yeah, my, my mate sent me the England golfer sent out them the um, a roadmap to March the 29th. Yeah, you'd have to think that um, Wales golf will will do the same. Uh, no, if I it's any so. earlier, it's a bonus. I think I've got my mind yeah. set on the 29th of March. I have. Wales <laughs> golf have had a lot of hard press over this lockdown, you know, a couple of posts I've seen on Twitter and, and, and they, they've been given an hard time because they haven't been able to give out the information they wanted. But slightly unfairly, in my opinion, because I think it's the government, whilst government has held them back from giving them that information, they've put a very strong case forward. I don't know if people know, like I'm an inclusive ambassador for Wales Golf, and they've put a very strong case forward for golf being open during, the, during our lockdowns. But it isn't that it's fallen on deaf ears, but the government have taken a pragmatic approach and saying, look, we need to do things in a certain way. But uh, for anybody who thinks that Wales golf are not a drag in their feet, they're not. They are working incredibly hard in the background. And I, for one, appreciate the effort they're putting in to try and get golf courses open for us because it keeps this right. It keeps this strong upstairs. And that's the one thing we can let slip in lockdown is uh, how we approach our lives with our mental attitudes and our positivity. Just don't get dragged into that negativity. If you see negative comments, don't react to them. Just move forward and be positive. And if we all do it, when that end of lockdown comes, the golf is just going to be incredible for all of us. Eh? That's that's my like uh, view on it. Uh, I hope you're right, Mike. I certainly am. You know, like I said, there's a lot of people that just need to get out now and have that fresh air. And what a lovely way... You know, smacking our white ball around the place. Left, right, centre, middle, whatever you want. Or even in the ball. Um, I think I'll tell you something, Sean, quick thing before I forgot. Me and Mike was playing a game of golf once. 
and in Woodlake Golf. And there was a man in front of us. And um, I don't know if you know Woodlake. Oh, you've played there. I, did you say you've played there, Sean, or no? No, no, I haven't, no. Right. Well, there's one hole, Mike. It's the one that goes down to the pond, remember? The bank yeah. is on the right-hand side. The 16, so par 3. Par 3. So we hit it down now. It hits the side of the bank. It runs straight across the green into the pond. He takes another drop. He hits it. It hits the bank. It goes down. It goes straight across the green into the pond. He goes down the bottom, and he has a drop. He goes to hit it, he thins it, right, because he thought he was going to chip it. He could have putted it. It went straight across the green and at the pond. So he picks up his bag now, and he throws the whole thing into the pond. So me and him are laughing like hell, and this guy storms off, and we can see him going down to the 18th. Then he turns around, and I said to Mike, I said, he's coming back. He said, there's a lot of money's worth of, of golf clubs. <laughs> he comes in, takes his socks and shoes off, rolls up his trousers. He goes wading in. He eventually gets down to it in this horrible sewer of a pond, pulls it out. He opens a zip. He gets his car keys out and then chucks it further. <laughs> <laughs> Me and him, we couldn't play golf after I couldn't stop laughing. He threw it further in the pond. I tell you what, that's a man who, who should never have started that game. <laughs> it does. It, it does do that to you, though, doesn't it? You know, and it depends on your temperament. I mean, I'm. I'm. Nobody's more competitive than me, but I, I. I can't say I throw my clubs around. I play a lot in the wedges society with Andy Legg, the former Wales international fullback. Right. And now there's a competitive person and a. Really good golfer, <laughs> really good golfer, right? <laughs> but honestly, and he buys all the real nice tailor made stuff. He's got cracking clubs and gear. No. I've seen him left hand there, right? I've seen him duff or slice a drive, and then his brand new driver, <laughs> it's it's cartwheeling into the woods <laughs> like that. <laughs> Unbelievable! Unbelievable. Uh Sean, I played with Mike. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, right is he? I, I, I've I'm always been this calm. Him. He's a lot calmer now than he used to be. <laughs> That's really, you want to get uh, you want to get followers to send in their um, their videos, Mike, of uh, anybody who's got that. I tell you another way. I played with my dad at at yeah. uh, it was called Mon Nickel back in the past. It's called the Mond now. Just by Clidach Ponte Yeah. And there's one there's one hole. It's a it's a right angle dog leg, right? So it's lit it's it's a it's a nine or eight iron to the corner. You can't go any further in the trees. No. And then you literally go right angles to the left. Yeah. And along the right hand side of the tee is the canal, Neath Canal, right? <laughs> and my dad's a left hander now, and I'm playing, I'm no more than 14, and I'm playing with him. And he's got, I can see him now, he's got these left-handed Sam Sneed irons, right? Good and they've God. got red, red <laughs> leather grips. You know, remember the ones that twirl around? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The ones that it, Noah it, and Moses used to wear. That's used. it. It's <laughs> pissing down with rain. It's, it's thumping down with rain, right? And my dad would yeah. never have an umbrella, right? He'd be lucky if he, he put a, like a, a, a parker on or something. But he, he's there, he's on it, he's left-handed, so the canal's down the right. I give it a nice one, that, and and his next door neighbour, Graham, is playing with us. And he's shaped up. And my dad cast iron. If you were a betting man, you'd put all your money on it going uh, right to left. Slice, right? Yeah. He's gone like that. He's come He's come underneath it. He's gone. Whoo, and the club has literally just gone through his grip, right? <laughs> and again, it's cartwheeling now, right? There's only one place it's going. It's going. Yeah. Whoo, it's landed in the canal, right? Yes. And it's stuck up like that in the canal. <laughs> like an like antenna. Excalibur, like Excalibur <laughs> sticking in the canal, right? Uh, oh, God. Did he go in for it or no? No, or no, he... no, no. No, he didn't go in. No, oh, brilliant. Great man. <laughs> That's just where he deserved to be by the sound of it. That's Sam Sneed. <laughs> yeah, play. Oh, well. You know. I guess Excalibur, I like that. <laughs> Oh, boy, he's happy St. David's Day anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful day here in Wales today. It's almost a goal. Yes, day. it's beautiful. Even better oh, because of uh, Saturday's rugby. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, we'll, we're getting to the end of the, our time, unfortunately. So I'll see some, we'll do some goodbyes now and then Ryan can edit it out uh, as and when. 
Lovely. So, Lovely I just want to say, guys. Lovely I just wanted to, sorry, mate. We'll get there in the end. As Gav said, happy St. David's Day to everybody who's listening. It's been a fantastic weekend, especially for the rugby. We've got many weekends coming up with the golf, and I can't wait to share them with you at our events or in person. Or everyone at Great Days Golf is looking forward to just getting together. That's all we want. So from my main guests on the first ever Pirate Podcast, Sean Holly and Gavin will let them say a goodbye and have a great St. David's Day and I'll see you next week. Thanks, Cheers, Mike. everyone. Brilliant. Thanks Cheers. for having me. And uh, good luck with the Pirate Podcast. I, I, I reckon it'll go from strength to strength. Yeah, and I do. Yeah, and goodbye from me as well. Lovely to meet you, Sean. And, and you uh, hopefully we'll have a knock one day if we can get a Pirate to put his hand in his pocket to take us somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I'll take and you, mate. Gav's got to go now because you got to film the next Bet365 advert. Ray Winston. <laughs> <laughs>